We are here to answer, this is part two of some questions for Dr. Carlos Camargo speaking about what vitamin D level helps prevent upper respiratory infections. Dr. Camargo, number seven, how does vitamin D help prevent upper respiratory infections? Well, we don't know for sure, but um, I think the most popular answer to that is that vitamin D is known to influence the levels of a protein called uh, cathelicidin. And, and it's one of many protective proteins that are on skin surfaces and in mucous membrane surfaces, like in your gut, in your airway. And, and there's pretty good evidence that when vitamin D levels rise, it causes the, the body to make more of this protein, which works as a weak antibiotic in, in fighting infections, invaders um, that are present in your skin or in your gut or in your airway. And so we don't know that for sure, but I think that's the most likely mechanism at this point. And it would suggest a pretty generic benefit from vitamin D against different infections. All right. Which respiratory infections seem to be the most impacted by vitamin D? We don't really know. Uh, there, there was one study that suggested that influenza A seemed to be uh, prevented by vitamin D and influenza B not, but there isn't, there hasn't been any confirmation of that finding. And, and so I think at this point, the more likely scenario is that vitamin D has a general antimicrobial um, benefit for those who are very low in, at, at the start. Uh, in other words, people who have levels of 10 or 20 nanograms per mil, when they take a supplement, boost their levels, those boost levels turn into more cathelicidin and immune defenses which then uh, provide a more general protection against different types of infections. I appreciated the comment that you made on my question about the study which showed that it impacted uh, influenza A but not B and about the timing of those two. Would you um, expand on that a little bit or tell your audience a little bit more about that? Yeah, one of the this this earlier study, um, it was you know I did touch on it briefly in the in the slideshow. This is a paper by uh, Mitsu Hiroshima in Japan, and it was uh, a very nice paper that that suggested that if you gave school kids vitamin D or placebo, that the kids who got the vitamin D had less influenza A, and and that was his primary outcome, and and so he presented this. But he also said you know hey, and by the way, it looks like influenza B was not lowered among the vitamin D group. Actually, it might even have been higher. And and I've actually talked with him about these data, and and I, I don't think that vitamin D increased the risk of influenza B. I mean, that I just don't know how that would work. To me, um, and, and, and Dr. Oshima agrees with this interpretation, what might be happening is that vitamin D lowers the risk of infection uh, and then in Japan that year, influenza A was the first one to come through. And so people were less likely to get influenza A. And then as that wave passed and the next wave of pathogens arrived, it was influenza B. And those people who hadn't gotten influenza yet got the next one. Um, and we actually are analyzing right now another uh, randomized trial that, that shows the same pattern which is that if you have a pretty virulent bug and it, it wants to get you, um, you can resist it maybe a little more with vitamin D, but not indefinitely. It, it's, it, it will get you eventually. And so when you think about something like a pandemic, like H1N1, um, there's value in taking the vitamin D when you're low to fighting it, but you need to do more. It's not enough to simply say, oh, if we had just given vitamin D to everybody, we wouldn't have had a pandemic. I don't believe that. I don't think the data will ultimately support that. Thank you. And I think you've already answered number nine about there's some infections that are not significantly impacted. Um, mm -hmm. Let's go on to 10, actually number 11. Once one has an infection, is it then too late for a higher dose to help? 
We don't know yet, and I think it's a good idea that if we can induce these these antimicrobial peptide cathelicidin, uh, might that not help? Now, one way to approach this would be to look at any number of different um, illnesses or or um, trauma uh, that happen to people and well, do they need more vitamin D at that moment? And, and those kind of studies are just starting where people are looking at what happens to the vitamin D level as people go into the ICU. Um, th does it seem to go down? Is it gobbled up uh, as the body is fighting infection or injury or other problems like that? And, and we're starting a, a study here at Mass General um, a couple of them actually to look at this and if we see good results we're going to try to do a randomized trial to see if there's value in boosting what's the available vitamin D to somebody as they're fighting an infection or a, a traumatic injury etc. But right now I, I'm not aware of data that taking extra vitamin D at that moment um, would help you. That doesn't mean it, you know, it doesn't mean it, it doesn't help you uh, and if it's a small, you know, reasonable amounts, uh, I don't see harm from doing that. Um, but I think there there isn't the science right now to answer that question. We are just getting into the treatment area with vitamin D, aren't we? Yeah, and it's. But I tell you, it's nice to know that there is a signal there, as we say, right? There is some benefit. We can see it now in randomized <laughs> double-blind trials. That's true. So you know, five years ago, or even three years ago, people said, ah, oh, no, vitamin D is all about the bone and you guys are just wasting your time. I I don't think that's true anymore. And, and, and if it's true for infection, why couldn't it be true for any number of other diseases? And this gets back to this very you know, basic understanding of vitamin D, which is it's not even a vitamin, it's a hormone. And and people naturally have very higher levels than, than what we have in the United States, for example. And and if you were low in the level of a hormone, wouldn't you expect your body to not work as well, et cetera, et cetera. So I think, you know, infection is one of many different outcomes, but the fact that we're already seeing some signal here, some benefit from giving a supplement to somebody who feels okay, they look okay, um, I think is very promising for a lot of the different outcomes that we talk about with relation to vitamin D. Thank you again for your participation this morning, Dr. Camargo, and we will post these webinar uh, recordings onto our website probably later today for the whole world to listen. And thank you again. Oh my! Well, keep up the good work, Carol. <laughs> we will. Talk Take to care. you later. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye. Bye.